You can say that it's uh, incredibly balanced in that one of the ways that you think about that is through something that is um, equal, equally weighted. You've got six figures, three on each side. And in fact, if you folded this piece in half, it would be not only balanced, but it would be symmetrically balanced. That the symmetry is that it's equal on both sides. So as I mentioned, there are uh, types of balances. There are two types. Symmetrical, that's near exact matching. Um, it, there's balanced unity. And if a piece has too much balance, it's actually rather boring. Now symmetrical balance is also balanced, but the left and the right sides are not the same. As I mentioned, it's still balanced. But those elements of balance happen according to their size and meaning. And it's felt around an implied center of gravity. So this is a really confusing concept for most people. Uh, symmetrical balance is fairly simple. You could say, geez, I could take an artwork and uh, such as this one and fold it in half, fold the uh, image in half, and it would be identical on both sides. This is a very um, historical um, hanging scroll, Ming Dynasty from the 15th century. And it's one of the most symmetrical paintings ever made. On the other hand, there's asymmetrical balance. And here's Edgar, Edgar Degas, his jockeys before the race. Now you can talk about this painting as being balanced because there's a large horse in the lower right and so that's our first center of attention. And it is counterbalanced by the sun, that very small yellow round object in the upper left. So this diagonal composition is common in asymmetrical uh, compositions. And when you see that, it can help you find the key to balance. So this warm, simple shape of the sun is balanced against the cool shape on the opposite corner. Here are two examples. We have Leila Ali again. Uh, her titles are, uh, are untitled. And on the left we have symmetry. And if you were again to fold that uh, uh, painting in half, you would see from left to right that it's exactly identical and very balanced. But the one on the, uh, th that's the uh, figure of the the figurative piece with the blue headdress, the one on the left, that's symmetrical. The asymmetrical piece on the right is um, balanced. It's still balanced, but it's considered asymmetrical balance. Because if you think of this area on the very top of the piece as being this very large block of blue, actually kind of counterbalances this lower half with these white figures. Similarly, if you dissected the piece, that this figure on the ground, on the uh, bottom of the image, is counterbalanced against this tall, upright figure. Another term that we'll use to talk about art is scale. And scale is a, a comparative size of an artwork in relation to its normal or expected size. It refers, it can refer to the entire artwork, or scale can refer to elements within work. So here's an example, Klaus Oldenburg and Van Bruggen, the Spoon Bridge and Cherry. This is at the Walker Art Center in downtown Minneapolis. It's made of aluminum and stainless steel, done in 1985. And you can get a real sense of scale here as you see this cherry and spoon juxtaposed to the skyline of the Minneapolis downtown. You can see also how large it is in relationship to the surrounding grass. So this piece would be a great example of scale.
In Maya Lin's uh, Avalanche, I'd like to talk a moment about the various elements that we see here in this piece. It's got a strong sense of line. We've got uh, curving lines that create uh, uh, motion. Th they are um, not static li uh, lines because they are curved. They give us a very strong sense of movement. Um, in the background, we've got this um, triangle of glass um, that kind of counterbalances the line on the bottom. How would you talk about this piece by Leila Ali, untitled, again, gouache on paper? So it's interesting how the uh, color directs you and moves your eye through the painting. Would this be balanced, symmetrical, asymmetrical? What about the lines that are being used here? Shape, mass, and form. Well, these three terms are often used interchange interchangeably. Shape refers to the expanse within the outline of a two-dimensional area or a 2D area. It also can refer to, the shape can refer to the outer boundaries of a three-dimensional object. Now, a three-dimensional object is often a sculpture, all right? So when you see a sculpture, you can refer to it in terms of its mass. It's the mass of uh, a three-dimensional object. Form can also be used to talk about the physical bulk of an art piece. So that may be the form that a sculpture takes. In Gabriel Orozco's piece, Black Kites, it's a graphite on skull, done in 1997. We've got an expanse with the outline of this two-dimensional area with the outer boundaries of this three-dimensional object. Remember, objects are 3D, and prints and paintings are generally two-dimensional. So lines are very prominent in this piece. Also, the shapes that are generated by the squares. Louise Bourgeois, her spider. There's a considerable amount of mass that you sense in seeing this spider that is made of bronze with uh, um, uh, sitting outside of this museum, the Kemper Art Museum in Ohio. So mass, as we said, is generally a three-dimensional object. Here, Louise Bourgeois, her spiders, are called the nest and made of steel. In Barry McGee's, we can refer to this work and talk about its form. The form that these pieces take um, has to do with the physical bulk of the glass. Uh, the drawings on the glass, and then the, the uh, installation itself, the form that this installation takes. One of the things I want to talk about are shapes. You often see shapes within artwork and can refer to them as a way of describing it. You've got geometric shapes and organic shapes. Geometric shapes generally are circles, triangles, square. Um, most geometric shapes are human-made. And then there are organic shapes, which are generally irregular. They have curves. They might be rounded. They're rather informal. And most shapes in nature happen to be organic, with some exceptions, such as the snow uh, uh, snowflake or a honeycomb. So here's two artists, John Baldessari on the left, called Stonehenge, with two, pers two persons, Violet, that has um, 